You are now listening to Changing Lives, a podcast presented by Mount Gilead Full Gospel International Ministries, hosted by co-pastor Elena Robertson. Welcome back to Changing Lives with the Word of God as we are changing lives. And so we're so excited that you've joined us and we pray that you have been tuning in to our previous podcast. We're in the midst of a series called The Mind of Christ. And actually this is part five. It's a whole lot that we can learn in the word of God about the mind of Christ. And I could probably go on and on and on, but we're going to cap it off with another couple of more Uh, sessions. Um, But I know it has been rich, and I pray that if you haven't had a chance to partake of those previous podcasts, go back and listen, because it would do you justice to be able to get that in your spirit and to allow it to solidify so that we can truly, so you can truly operate and flow in the mind of Christ. And so um, our base scripture, we've started out with uh, 1 Corinthians 2.16. It says, for we have the mind of Christ. And um, and, and that's just how it is. That all that Christ went through for us, all that he did for us, he has given us the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. And then in Philippians 2, 5, it says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you have the opportunity to decide whether you're going to allow the mind of Christ that he's already given you if you're going to let it be in you, in your being. And so the last uh, few uh, podcasts, we've been talking about the characteristics of um, the mind of Christ. And we started out talking about life being one of those characteristics of the mind of Christ stemming from out of uh, Romans 8, chapter 6, verse that says, the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. So he's come to give us life and life more abundantly. When you look at Jesus and all that he stood for, he came to give us life. Hallelujah. And then another characteristic that we shared about was a single, um, having a single mind, being single mindedness, or another way of saying is not being double minded. And in James, it talks about how a double minded man is unstable and all of his ways. So you may start out being a little shaky, wavering, teeter-tottering back and forth between opinions or thoughts or, um, you know, wavering in your faith. And, and that will eventually begin to seep into other areas of your life, other areas of your faith. And so James says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So the mind of Christ calls us to be single minded, to be focused minded, uh, to um, to go for bull's eye, um, to be um, centered on uh, 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 one thing, one opinion, one one one. Uh, uh, if, if if you're believing the word of God, you're not thinking one way. Yes, I can do all things through Christ, and then the next moment you're thinking, I don't know if I can do this, but you're centered. So having a singleness of mind, being single minded uh, is a, a, a just an awesome characteristics of the mind of Christ. And so the word says we have that mind. So now you need to let that mind be in you. So now we're going to go ahead and, and continue on with some additional characteristics of the mind of Christ. And in this podcast, we're going to talk about humility. Wow. That's a strong word, humility. And so and the word of God, you'll see it referenced in different uh, manners, but in, in particular in the scripture that's in uh, Philippians, the second chapter, where we get, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That's that fifth verse. But if you go up a little bit in that third verse, it talks about this. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other others better than themselves. And so that whole, that, that one scripture is loaded and we're going to go, um, in, in, in deeper into that, that chapter. Um, but we're going to start out with what is lowliness of mind. And another way of looking at lowliness of mind is really being free from pride, 
free from haughtiness, being haughty, just a high minded, um, arrogant, free from that. Um, it's a humbleness of mind, um, a meekness of mind. So we're going to use the phrase humility, but it's synonymous with lowliness of mind, meekness, and uh, the absence of pride, the absence of haughtiness and arrogance. Okay. And so when we look at humility, it, it it's, it's, you look at the different uh, ingredients that uh, a person that flows in humility has, and our ideal uh, model is, of course, or example, is Jesus Christ. And so when you look at him, he was very comfortable in who he was as he walked in the earth with him. He was settled. He was set. He was not rattled by others' opinions of, of, of him, what they thought he was, uh, and many thought him that he was just a simple carpenter's son. Um, many, you know, didn't even recognize that he was the Messiah, but that did not cause him to waver in who he was. He was still humble in recognizing that he was the son of God. But just briefly, some of the characteristics of humility, and then we're going to get into Philippians, the second chapter, and we'll learn more about the mindset of of Jesus Christ, but being comfortable in who you are in the Lord. Um, a person that walks and flows in humility recognizes where their help comes from. And we know as Christians that our help comes from the Lord, that uh, it's not within our own strength. It's not in our own intellect. It's not in our own might, but it is in the Lord that our help comes from, from the smallest task to the greatest greatest task from the simple of things to the the most complicated of things. Our help comes from the Lord. He is our source. He is our strength. In him, we should, as the word of God says, live and move and have our being. We did not put breath in our own bodies, but our breath, our life comes from him. He is our source, our lifeline. And so that humility has great strength. It is not being weak. It is not being uh, soft and flaky. No, it's 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 a uh, inward peace. Uh, it's 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 like a quiet storm. There's in a storm. There's great power within that storm, but it's it's quiet. Another way of saying it is that still waters run deep. When you look at a, a stream that looks still, but Underneath the, those still waters, there is movement going on. Even like a, a undercurrent that I talked about in a previous podcast. But humility has a certain amount of of of, of strength, a great amount of strength. Um, it's an uh, attitude of the mind. Okay, humility. It's it's not uh, an outward demeanor because you can look like you're humble, but Inside, you can be full of pride. So it has nothing to do with the outward appearance, uh, acting. You can act like <laughs> you're humble. But humility is an inside job. It's, 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 it's a part of your inward countenance. And um, in the Word of God, we see that um, uh, when you're dealing with the mind, you'll see the heart is synonymous to the mind, okay? And the soul, the soulless part of you, uh, your mind is connected in that. Your mind, your intellect, your will, your emotions, all of those things. But the mind part is synonymous to the heart, okay? So it's, it's an attitude. Humility is an attitude of the heart, an attitude of the mind. It's a state of your mind. When you're dealing with a state, that means something is set, it's not something that, you know, is, 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 is here and there every now and then depends on what's going on. You're humble. No, no, no. Humility is a, it's, it's a fixed state of being in your mind. Hallelujah. And in your heart. And um, when you look at humility, it actually speaks of relationship because humility, you know, is really, it's, it's really, doesn't have any value unless it's connected to relationships because humility is something that you exude from your inward being towards others, others that you have some type of relationship with. And of course, first and foremost, foremost, it should be our humility towards God. And we'll talk a little bit about that, but 
let's 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 focus in on uh, the humility and as it relates to the countenance of our being. Um, and so it also so humility deals with your relationship, relationship with others, and relationship with God. In um, the Word of God, it talks about how we are to um, clothe ourselves with humility. Um, it, it says, likewise, ye younger. Submit yourself unto the elders. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and to be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and give grace to the humble. And we'll see as we share throughout this podcast all the amenities that come along with humility. I mean, my goodness, they're powerful. And so as we look at other uh, things as it relates to um, humility, we'll see throughout the Word of God, meekness is another way of, 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 of defining uh, humility. In Matthew 5, 5, where it talks about, the fifth chapter where it talks about the Beatitudes, having that type of attitude. And one of the Beatitudes is, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And then another scripture that relates to that is, but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And that's coming from out of Psalms 37, 11. So we see humility, meekness. Meekness, you inherit the earth things that are in the earth. We're not talking about over in the by and by when we get to heaven. There are things that you're going to inherit in the earth realm, physically, that you're going to be blessed with. Amen. And so then it also says, um, you know, in Psalms 37, it says, also you will delight in the abundance of peace. So with humility, with meekness, comes inheritance from the earth, but also comes an abundance of peace. Now, I don't know who who in this earth realm would not want peace, especially like right now in this day and age. We want peace, but to have an abundance of peace, not just peace just to get you by, but an abundance of peace, hallelujah, where it just exudes from you. And no matter what the circumstances are or the situations are, when you are meek, when you are humble, when you have humility in your attitude, in your mind towards others and towards God, you are able to have or or flow in the abundance of peace. That is awesome. Glory to God. But as we go back to Philippians, the second chapter, and we did, we uh, delve into it. We're going to just break down some of the things because it really is the epitome, this particular chapter of what humility is about, because it defines the example that Jesus Christ was for us. And so as we start, um, let's go to the second chapter of Philippians. And it says, therefore, if you have any encouragement, this is the first verse we're starting at. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded. Being like-minded, and and and, and that within itself, it 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 it, it that like-mindedness. Whenever whenever I see the word mind, I'm, I'm automatically zoning into that because to me that's 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 God laying out the mind of Christ. Like-mindedness. What is like-mindedness? It's it's having um, thinking the same thing, being of the same mind. Um, having that equal the, the, the equal soulish part of you and and so keeping in mind that as we go through the scripture you'll see yes uh Jesus was a, a deity but he came and 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 clothed himself in humanity so he was acquainted with the soulish part of us and so he demonstrated in the earth realm how the soul is to be how the soul, emotions, intellect, the mind, the will, all of that is supposed to be. And so, so it's, it start, starts out saying, um, be, um, make my joy complete by being like-minded. 
Hallelujah. And having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind, saying the same thing, being one on one accord, on one accord with what the way that God thinks, the way that Jesus thinks, the example that he gave. And then it goes on in the um, third ver- ver- verse, and it um, says, as I flip back to the King James Version, it says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. And so when we break down that particular scripture, when you look at strife, it's it's having an elevated sense of yourself. It's putting your own interests before others. It's having that selfish ambition for yourself, for your own selfish gain. And then in that very same phrase where it says strife, or vainglory, that vainglory is being excessive with pride or or, or, um, or over your own uh, achievements or being conceited, okay? And so, but then it goes on to say, but in lowliness, so don't so so don't flow in being con- stuck on yourself. Don't be don't flow in being conceited or having uh, being so uh, concentrated on your own ambition that you don't think about others. But it says, be in lowliness of mind or humble or meek, which means in in relations to others, esteeming others better than yourself. Okay. And so then in that next verse, it says, let not every man on his own thing, let let not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. So, so, you know, the mind of Christ, a humble mind, a meek mind is a mind that does not be, is not consumed with their own things. I've often said what people that deal with depression, and, and I certainly have had uh, it to present itself to me and thank God through the Holy Ghost. He showed me the traps of the enemy when depression tries to present itself to to me. And when it comes, tries to present itself to, to you, you have to recognize this, that most of the time when you're dealing with depression, you are consumed about yourself. You are consumed about what's going on in your world. You're not really thinking of a somebody else. You're thinking about how you feel. You're thinking about what you don't have. You're thinking about what you have to go through. You're thinking about um, um, all the different things that concern your life. And so, but the scripture in verse four is talking about not being only on your own thing, but every man also on the things of others. I'm telling you, that is a great antidote for depression is to be concerned, more concerned about others than you about your own stuff. Now, you're able to do that if you have the mind of Christ, because when you have the mind of Christ, you know that God will not forsake you. You know that God is with you. You know that God will take care of you. You know that God, that you can trust God because he will help you to work through whatever needs to be handled in your own life. God will take care of your stuff. And so when you know that, when you have that mindset, that same like-mindedness that Jesus Christ has, then you won't have a problem with saying, okay, I know that my stuff is not all together like it, like it needs to be. There's nothing that I personally can do to make it change right now, but to trust God and depend on him to move in my situation. So why not me go look to see how I can help somebody else, how I can tend to somebody else business, how how I can encourage somebody else and see what I can do for someone else. How can I pray for somebody else? Glory to God. That is an awesome antidote for depression. Glory to God. And so then the fifth verse goes on to say, which has been one of our foundational scriptures is let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So what is that mindset? The mindset to think about others? more so than yourself, the mindset not to be uh, full of humility, to, to flow in meekness, lowliness of mind, not being weak 
um, and thinking lowly of yourself than, than you should. But no, having a balance of humility that you put others before yourself and you recognize that that doesn't make you any less of a person. As a matter of fact, it adds strength to your countenance. It adds strength to your being. It makes you a greater person when you consider other people over yourself. Glory to God. And so as we go on, it says, now it begins to talk about uh, uh, Jesus Christ. And it says in the sixth verse, who being in the form of God, relating to Christ, relating to Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of God. Come on now. He was sitting on his throne. He was with the father. He was communing with the father. He had everything. He had riches. He had everything that he need. But when God gave him the assignment to come into the earth realm to fulfill the assignment that he needed to do in order to redeem man, in order to reconcile us back to God, he wasn't stuck on, oh no, I'm not coming off my throne. He wasn't high-minded. He wasn't thinking of himself more highly than he, than he ought. He wasn't thinking, oh my goodness, I have to come down to this filthy old world just to, to live a life, to show these hard-headed folk how to live life and how to live it abundantly. Are you kidding me, God? Do I have to do this? No. In his mindset, he recognized, I have everything. I literally have everything where I am on my throne, but I'm going to give up my throne. I'm going to release my throne to come down on earth. And he did not think it was robbery. Why? Because he knew at the other end of his assignment that he would be even greater than what he was before he stepped out of heaven and into humanity. Glory to God. I mean, come on. He said he made himself of no reputation. He didn't think it was robbery. He didn't think that God was cheating him out of something. No, because he was thinking of others. He was thinking of you. He was thinking of me and recognizing this is something I need to do. But I know when I finish my assignment, I shall be greater than what I am now before the assignment. That's incredible. And so he took on the form of a servant. This is the mind of Christ. This is the mind that in verse five is saying, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So to, to he made himself of no reputation. That's his mindset. He took on the form of a servant. That's the second mindset. And he came into the likeness of man. He, he downgraded himself. Come on now, who, who, who is willing to downgrade? Come on, who is willing to, to, to come down to a lower estate when they have already attained all the riches? This was the mindset of God. And it was no, not, it, it was for a purpose to destroy the works of the evil one, to, to bring us redemption, glory to God. So it wasn't like he was just doing it. So no, you know, you don't downgrade because, because, uh, you know, uh, the enemy has stripped you from things. No, he down, he, he, it was his own free will, his own free choice to say, okay, I'm going to step down into a lower state of being and walk this earth so that I can be acquainted with humanity to be able to conquer all of the tragedies, all of the trials, all of the circumstances, all of the situations, all of the persecution, all of the pain, all of the hurt, all of the sin that is wrapped up in humanity. Glory to God. And so in the eighth verse, it says, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. It took humility it took him having to recognize, I got all of this, but I lay it down for the cause of the kingdom. He laid it down. So, so not only did he lay it down because, okay, he came into the earth realm, but he had to suffer. He had to go through pain. He had to go through heartache. He had to go through the worst of anything that we could ever imagine. He went through the worst of it. OK, even to the obedience of death. So it says and became obedient unto death, even the death 
of the cross. That was the mind of Christ. Now, we thank God that, that, that he sent Jesus Christ to die one time, once and for all. So we don't have to die that, that, that death to redeem us because we were redeemed through his death, through, through, his, through, his, through his suffering, through all that he went through. And he conquered death, hell, and the grave and was resurrected. And so he got victory over that. And be, through his victory, he gave that victory to us. Glory to God. So he became poor that we may become rich. He became, he, he became, he took on sickness that we could become healed. He, he, he became uh, lowly that, that we could be exalted and lifted up in Christ and in him. Glory to God. And so, but there is a death that we need to have as far as in our soulish part of our being. No, we don't have to suffer through the spiritual death anymore because that's settled. Glory to God. We have redemption through that. But the soulish death is this because in the word of God, it talks about how we have a cross that we have to pick up and that's the death of our soul, our will, our our emotions, the fleshly part of us has to die and and, and has to um, 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 allow Christ Jesus to rise within us. So we have to put put to death our 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 will to want to do our own thing, our selfish ambitions, our selfish and di- uh, 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 desires, our um um uh our, our our motives, our selfish motives that we may have that don't line up with the word of God. Those are things that we have to put to death. I mean, every day we have to die to ourselves because Paul tells us, you know, that even in, in the things that he did, he had to learn how to die daily because every day we wake up and we wake up in our soulish being and, and our flesh. And, and, and we have to put our soulish being and our flesh to death so that our spirit man can be the dominant man and it can rule and lead us and guide us throughout our day. That is every single day because this flesh will not give in <laughs> on a regular basis. You have to put it, you have to cause it to die. So, so Paul says, I die daily. And so if we are like-minded like Christ, then that's our ambition. That's our goal that every day when we wake up, we say flesh, you're not going to dictate to me what, what I'm going to do. Flesh, you're not going to tell me how I feel. Flesh, you're not going to tell me that I can't do this or I won't do this. Flesh, you're not going to rule me. I'm going to put you in your place and I'm going to let you know that I can do all things through Christ because why? His word tells me and I'm allowing my life, my life, my spirit, my soul, my body, every part of my being to be governed by the word of God. So every day you have to put this flesh uh, under. You have to cause this flesh to die to the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So the ninth verse goes on to say, this is after Jesus humbled himself even to death on the cross. And it goes on to say, wherefore, after that death on the cross, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. This is the result of humility. This is the result of uh, of being meek. This is the result of being lowly, of uh, uh, having a lowliness of mind. When you're putting others before yourself, God will exalt you. And I don't know any greater position than to be, of course, than God himself, but to have a name that's above every name. Now, come on now, when you look at that, he has given him a name which uh, which is above every name. That means anything in this earth realm that is named. So I'm looking at sickness. I'm looking at diabetes. I'm looking at high blood pressure. I'm looking at depression. I'm looking at bipolar. I'm looking at uh, even pride. I'm looking at all of those things that have a name that we can name when we look at in our lives. Oh, that's what that is. That's pride. Oh, that's what that is. That's haughtiness. Oh, that's what that is. God, that's Uh, being conceited. Oh, that's what that is. That is a low self-esteem. Oh, that's what that is. So anything that is named, God has given Jesus Christ a name that's above that name. And then it goes on to say that at the name of Jesus, the 10th verse, that every knee should bow 
and of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that at every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh my goodness. Philippians chapter two is loaded. If you need humility, go and study Philippians chapter two, because it will touch all bases. It will show you, it will call out vanity. It will call out vainglory. It will call out strife. It will call out all those things that are conceited, that are full of pride. And it will cause you to look at yourself and say, look, is is the way I'm thinking, is the way that I'm dealing with others, is that the way that Jesus Christ would deal with other people. And so um, it's powerful to see what happens. And then if you go on in that particular uh, verse, a uh, particular chapter, it talks about how, um, let's see, the, the scripture in the 12th verse, it says this, and I love this because sometimes we use excuses that, oh, I, I'm the way I am because that's how I was born. Um, you know, my mama did this to me. My daddy wasn't here. You know, I had to go through this and go through that. That's the why. That's why I'm the way I am. It's my defense mechanism. I don't care what kind of excuse you give. Uh, this particular two scriptures that I'm going to share with you will let you know that no excuse that you give can fly. <laughs> the 12th verse says, wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but how much more in my absence. It says this, you work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Glory to God. Fear and trembling. That means you recognizing who you are and that you need God, that you have to work this thing out, that you have to work out pride, that you have to work out uh, being conceited. You have to work out being high-minded and arrogant and constantly thinking about yourself. Even a state like depression, where it seems like it is the lowest state. Uh, no, 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 no. That's the wrong side of lowliness. That's being low in your state of mind. And really it's a form of pride because pride is anything that does not line up to how God has us to think. Come on now. And the word of God just talks about how we, you know, in Romans 12, it says um, that we are not to think of ourselves more highly than we ought. Okay. But it didn't say that we should not think of ourselves highly. When you think of yourself highly, you're thinking of it in balance to the word of God. That means you know who you are. That means that you you know that uh, you are a child of God. You know your rights in, according to the word of God. You know what belongs to you. You know your inheritance. And so you have a healthy state of who you are and you have a healthy uh, um uh, uh, esteem about yourself. So low self-esteem depression is the opposite of humility because it's a low state of the mind of Christ. It's not thinking humbly as in recognizing God is my source. I, I, I reverence myself before him, but it's thinking even lower than we ought to about ourselves. So that's almost a form of pride. You know, where uh, humbleness is, is, is one thing, but pride is the total opposite of who we are. So humbleness is a balance of who we are, but pride is an off balance, whether it's high or really, really low. Okay. And so it, it's, it's taking on our own way of how we think we are. That's pride. Okay. And you're, and you're concentrating more on yourself than you are on God. So whether you're totally stuck on yourself as far as you're thinking, oh, I'm greater than this, I'm greater than now, and you're haughty, or you're totally on the way on the other end of the totem pole where it's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm not worthy to, to, to be in, you know, so-and-so's presence because I don't have this, I don't have that. You know, that that's off balance. That is not having humility. That is being lower, uh, having a lower estate than what you ought to think of yourself according to God's word. And so, you know, as we go on, you know, there's other characteristics of dealing with um, that lowliness of mindset. And, and so we know that pride, you know, it, it's the opposite of it. Arrogance is the opposite of it. Um, and, and so even what the word of God talks about as far as pride, it goes before destruction. 
um, in, in a haughty spirit before a fall. So, you know, so if you're seeing things that are falling apart, you need to check yourself to see if pride is on board. If things are failing, uh, you know, in your life, uh, you know, whether it may be marriage or relationships or whatever may be going on, it, you got to check to see if haughtiness, where you don't want nobody to tell you anything, where when somebody's trying to correct you and 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 you don't want nobody to tell you um, because you feel like, well, who are they? You know, it, can can you have somebody that that may be um, that that may be younger than you to tell you something um, to help you for your own good that you may be in the wrong with? Can you receive from people? You know, Jesus was able to receive you know, from people. And so, so you, you, so that humility is recognizing that, no, I can be humble and receive from you, but that doesn't mean that I'm making myself less than, that doesn't mean that I'm thinking myself less than who I should be, but it just recognizes that I can receive from you because I value who you are and I value, uh, you trying to help me to be a better person. Come on now, that's powerful. Humility is a is 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 an inward strength. Glory to God, and it's very closely related to submission. Oh gosh, that's another podcast right there. But it's 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 very powerful. But you know, when you look at uh, humility, you got to also be careful that you don't err on the side of false humility, because false humility is really pridefulness that's in disguise, okay? So when you practice false humility, you intentionally devalue yourself. Tell me this, because I had to deal with myself with this. When somebody gives you a compliment, do you... Uh, do you try to make light of it or try to downgrade? Like if somebody says, oh, oh, you look beautiful in your jacket. Do you say something like, oh, this old jacket, you know, you downgrade compliments or you try to um, lighten um, the effect of something, you know? And so, um, so when you look at that, that's not really being humble, OK, it's 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 flowing in false humility. Um, uh, another way of looking at it is um, when you attempt to appear humble, but but you 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 take something and you make it seem like it's not as big as it really is, you know, or you try to hide something um, and, and make it seem like it's not as it may seem. OK, and so remember that. Humility is an inside thing. So it's not what it looks like from the outside. It's the inward countenance. It's the inward mindset. And so beware of false humility, okay? And so what I want to end with is dealing with um, humility as it connects to uh, humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. When you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, you have you're cognizant of the fact that God is an almighty God. He is all powerful. He is great. And compared to me, he could take the breath of life out of my body just like that. You have a, 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 a um, awareness of the vastness of God, the greatness of God, and you have um, fear and reverence for God, not fear as in I'm scared of God, because God is a loving father. We, he, he, he does not want us to be scared of him because when you're scared of somebody, when you're scared of somebody, you don't want to be around them. No, he wants communion with us. He wants fellowship with us. So that fear is not, oh, I'm scared to be around God, but that fear is a respect of God. I recognize the power that you have. I recognize the ability ability, the might that's in you. And I honor that. I reverence that. I, I give a, a, um, a recognition to you and I recognize that it comes from you. I recognize that you as that, that, that my strength comes from you, that my source come from you. My breath of life comes from you at that, that you are the source, that you are everything. Okay. And so, and so that's what you know, that's where true humility begins to start to come from um, because humility starts as an inside job 
And it happens in secret because when God gives us something and he tells us to do something, our obedient obedience is connected to that humility because obedience is um, a powerful force when no one else knows what God told you to do, but yet you determine in your spirit that you're going to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and you're going to do what he told you to do. When you do the opposite, that's pride because you're saying, God, me, you want me to do that? No, I'm not going to do that. You know, or you decide, no, I I don't have what it takes. Or you, you know, you're not recognizing that if God gave you assignment to do something that he's going to give you everything you need. You're not recognizing that he has the ability, the power to give you everything you need. And you have not humbled yourself to recognize that. And so humility, obedience, uh, reverence, respect uh, to God, that's all connected. And so, but in 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6, it talks about how we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt us in due time. And so when you when when you recognize that, when you recognize, okay, uh, who God is, the greatness of God, you have an understanding of your position as it relates to Him. You're connected to the Father; He's your source; He's your everything. And then you then it's easy for you to begin to flow in humility, okay? Because you recognize God is my source. You're not intimidated, okay, by somebody else. You're not intimidated by somebody else's success. You're not intimidated by somebody else's confidence. You're not intimidated by what somebody has and what and what you don't have. You don't you're not intimidated about even what somebody can do to you because you recognize your connection to the Father and what he's able to give to you. So you're able to walk in humility. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Come on. In your relationships, you're able to humble yourself. A person that flows in humility, it usually is that person that, that is able to, to ask for forgiveness when there's conflict. The first person, usually they're the first person to, to step to the plate and say, forgive me, even though they may recognize that they're not necessarily in the wrong. Because humility recognizes that my status, my who I am in God does not change. So I don't mind humbling myself to say, look, if I've offended you, forgive me. If I've done any wrong to you, please forgive me. Those were not my intentions. That is humility. Because what that does is it elevates you. It doesn't strip you and take anything from you. It elevates you and exalts you, glory to God, in your timing. And it also brings an abundance of peace. Come on now. Whenever you reconcile with somebody, whenever you've asked for forgiveness, peace comes after that. Glory to God. There is power in that. Let me close with this particular scripture because we're talking about the mind of Christ, right? So humility, meekness, lowliness of mind, all of those things are ingredients uh, uh, to uh, having uh, the mind of Christ and, and being connected to the Father. Jesus recognized his relationship with the Father. He recognized all of those things, glory to God. But this is what he tells us in Matthew, the 11th verse, the 28th through the 30th. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And this is something what he says. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. What is what is what does he want us to learn of him? The very next phrase says this, for I am meek and lowly in heart. Oh, my goodness. He is meek and lowly in heart. And so this is what we need to learn of him. And then it goes on to say, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Come on now, when you are meek, when you flow in humility, you're going to have peace of mind. You're going to be able to rest at night. He goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me share with you in the Amplified version. And it says, um, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened, and I will cause you to rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am gentle, meek, and humble, lowly in the heart, and you will find rest 
relief and ease and refreshment and recreation and blessed quietness for your souls. For my yoke is wholesome, useful, good, not harsh, hard, sharp, or pressing, but comfortable, gracious, and pleasant. And my burden is light and easy to be borne. When I think of somebody who's prideful, I think of all of these things. Um, a harsh, uh, not useful, a uh, hard and sharp and pressing, um, uncomfortable. I mean, when you're around somebody that's prideful, it's usually un- you're uncomfortable around them. Okay, they're not gracious and they're unpleasant to be around. But Jesus is saying you will find the very opposite of that. You'll be you. It's wholesome. You'll find that goodness and that pleasantness and that graciousness. And so Jesus is saying, learn of me through the second chapter of of, of Philippians. It says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So as you let it, what you're saying, what you're doing is you're learning of him how to flow in humility, how to flow in meekness, how to flow in a heart and a mind that is humbled, that that is that that is gentle, that is meek, and that is mild. And so I encourage you to, to really meditate on this because this is powerful. Humility, like I said, it's not weakness. It is a great inward strength to flow in humility. And that's what Jesus Christ flowed in. He flowed in humility. He, he knew who he was, the son of God, but yet he, he, he didn't go and, 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 and on a loud speaker or cry loud. I am this, I am that. He let others do that. <laughs> John the Baptist cried out, you know, uh, and, and, and his disciples, you know, spoke out for him, but he lived that quiet, still life, but yet it was powerful. And so I encourage you, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. God bless you. This has been another episode of Changing Lives. Be sure to subscribe to stay updated on new episodes. Also, find us on the web at mountgileadfgim.org and follow us on Instagram at mountgileadfgim.org.